Friday is a special week. Uh, for those of you with kids in school, you know that they have just two days of school to th this week, and then they're out for the holiday. And for many of you, you probably have family gatherings, getting together with people to celebrate the holiday. Uh, maybe for some people, you're already got together with family for an early Thanksgiving. But, uh, you know, a lot of people like Thanksgiving more than any other holiday of the year. And I think that one reason for that is because Thanksgiving has low expectation compared to a lot of other holidays, specifically Christmas. Uh, as, as we think about, there is food to make, and that can be a lot of work. But Christmas, think about it, Christmas has usually a meal, and presents, and decorations, and festivals, and social gatherings, and all of these other things, these expectations that you have with Thanksgiving, you don't have a ton of Thanksgiving decorations to put up, you don't have the Thanksgiving festivals that, that you hear about, if you just get together with family and uh, eat. And uh, as they said at Monroe Chapel, also sleep and watch football and eat again. So, but Thanksgiving is really a kind of a low-key holiday in many ways. It could be considered to be the underdog holiday because we don't always give it much attention. And sometimes if you look out in the, in the in stores and places around you, you might think that Thanksgiving didn't exist. Uh, I remember I was looking for some uh, Thanksgiving-themed or fall-themed candy, and it was a mistake to try to look for that after Halloween because uh, wherever I looked, it was all winter and red and green, and I couldn't find it. Uh, but there's nothing wrong with celebrating Christmas early, but it is interesting that whereas Thanksgiving is a holiday where we are thankful for what we do have, Christmas is a holiday where we think about oftentimes what we want or what we can get or what we have to get sometimes. And so those two things are very different. And they're not necessarily bad, but when you put them together, it's hard to be thankful for what you have when you're thinking about what you want. So this Thanksgiving, we always think about this every year. We think about gratitude and what it means to have gratitude. And in our scripture reading today in Deuteronomy, uh, the, the whole book of Deuteronomy is written as a sermon that Moses is giving the Israelites before they enter into the promised land. And a lot of Deuteronomy is a warning. And this one is the part that we read is a warning. It says that when you go into the promised land and you settle down and you build houses and you have all kinds of good things and you have basically success and comfort, don't forget God. Don't forget what you've been through. Don't forget all that God has done for you. And don't start to think to yourself, well, I did this. You know, I did it all myself. And remember that even when you have wealth, remember the one who makes it possible for you to gain wealth. Don't forget God. And we're meant to read this with an ironic twist on it because if you know the story, you know that the Israelites do the exact thing that they're warned not to do. They forget. They go after other gods. They think that they've done it themselves. They, just, they forget to be thankful, and they try to go about their own way. Now, as we think about that, that leads to a good question. Why is it so hard to be thankful for any period of time? You know, it's easy to be thankful for a little bit, but it's hard to maintain that for any length of time. One reason I think that is, is that we like to complain. We all like to complain, right? And many times what we complain about are what I would call first world problems. You know, many people in the world live in what we sometimes call third world countries, where they lack infrastructure, they lack resources, they lack the type of government that is going to uh, help them. And so many people in the world live with a lot less than what we have. And so we know that we live in a, in a privileged area, a privileged part of the world. And so we oftentimes have what's called first world problems. That's because for a lot of people around the world, we are living the dream as Americans. And so to give you an example, sometimes I uh, will complain if my computer is running slower than it used to run. First world problem, right? Many people would love to have my problems. 
And that's the same thing for many of us with our first world problems. It's helpful to remember many people would love to have your problems. Uh, what do I do if my computer's running a little slow? I look at my phone, which also happens to function as a little computer. It's amazing when you think about it. Or I look at another computer, you know? I mean, it's just crazy. You know, we have these, all these problems that are a sign of how blessed we are. And so we like to complain. And sometimes we have problems that aren't first world problems. Sometimes our problems are problems that nobody would want to have. And it's easy to complain. And so it's easy to become less grateful. Another reason why we can, it's hard to maintain gratefulness over time is that we have short memories. And so when we are successful in life and we gain more stuff and more comforts and more, more uh, luxury, you would think that the more we have, the more thankful we would become because we'd have more to be thankful for. But actually, what oftentimes happens is the opposite. The more things that we have, the less thankful we become. And part of the reason for that is that we have a short memory. So we forget, maybe in some cases we forget where we came from or we forget <laughs> what people have done for us, what God has done for us. And we start to think, well, I did all this myself. And in one sense, that's true. In one sense, you know, we have earned things that we've worked for, that we've paid for, that we went to school for. And yet, on the other hand, we remember that it is God who gives us the ability to earn, to work, to go to school, all these things. And so if we are stewards, as we were talking about the last few weeks, if we are stewards, if everything that we have is a gift from God, then it changes our perspective in life. And it leads us to become grateful for everything, the small things and the big things. Okay, so, so how do we do that? You know, we know what makes it hard, but how do we maintain gratitude in our lives? Well, we need to look no further than the Apostle Paul. Uh, the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Philippians, this is the same letter that we referenced last week. And I said that Paul wrote this while he was in prison, and he didn't know if he was going to get out or not. And so his words really carry a lot of weight. And in his letter, he says that he knows what it is to be in plenty, and he knows what it is to be in want. In other words, he knows what it is to have more than enough, and he knows what it's like not to have enough. And he has found out how to be content in any situation. And, you know, that's pretty impressive. And it's pretty impressive from somebody writing from a jail, too. And so one thing that we think about when we think about being thankful for things in our life is we have to remember four magic words. It could be worse. It sounds bad, but what that means is basically is we look at the silver lining. We look at the positive rather than the negative. You know, it's so easy to focus on the deficiencies of what we have, such as the slowness of a computer, you say, versus what it can do, what we do have. It's easy to focus on what we don't have than what we do have. Or it's easy to focus on what we've lost than what we still have. And so the idea of it could be worse is to say, well, you know, to look at the bright side, to look at what you do have. Some people have problems that are very, very difficult. And there are some situations in life where it's really easy to say, really, could it be worse? Because in some situations, it doesn't seem like it could be any worse. You know, I know people who are going through things right now that it doesn't seem like it could be any worse. Uh, how many of you have heard of the movie Wonder? Yeah. Come out in the theaters recently. I just heard about it very recently. And there was a 2020 episode that had a true story about the child that the movie and book is based on. And he had 50-some surgeries to, to, you know, take care of many different facets of his face. And so he looked different. And uh, so he was sometimes ridiculed by kids in school, and he was having to grapple with life with not only looking different, but also having to have multiple surgeries to even get to where you could sort of lead a normal life. And then in the midst of one of the, the surgery episodes, the, the mom finds out she has cancer. And so she has to go through treatment while, you know, I mean, you would think, goodness, hasn't the, you know, haven't they had enough? 
How could it get any worse? And yet, one thing that they said in that episode is that they, they just didn't focus on that. You know, they could, <coughs> excuse me, they couldn't focus on that. They focused on the positive. They focused on what they needed to do. And so she went through her treatments while also they were taking care of their son, and they got through it. But sometimes it can feel that way. Boy, I don't know if it can get any worse. But looking at the bright side, looking at what you do have, sometimes that keeps you going. Uh, developing a heart of contentment is not easy. Because there are a lot of things that can come our way that can make it difficult. Uh, but we need to try. And, you know, Paul, I think that his secret to contentment was, of course, founded on Jesus. You know, Jesus Christ. And Jesus said the greatest commandment is to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the other is to love others as yourself. You know, to love God and love others. And isn't that interesting that that very thing can help us to feel better? There's a reason why people tell you that if you're down or depressed that you should go help other people. That's because when you are helping other people, you get the focus off of yourself and you get it on to others. You know, you, it's so easy to fixate on our own problems and to analyze and analyze some more and overanalyze. But when we help out other people, then we get the focus off of our problems and we get our focus on someone else. So we become other-centered. And even if it's for a moment, it helps us to see that the world is more than just what I have to go through. And that we can be a blessing to others even when we're going through tough times. And it helps us to just gain perspective in our own life. It's not a cure-all. It's not a magic fix. But isn't it neat that by serving others and by doing what God told us to do, the greatest commandment, we can help build gratitude in our own lives. So I want to encourage you this week as we go through this uh, Thanksgiving season. You know, you don't need Thanksgiving to be thankful. You can celebrate Christmas in a great way in which you show gratefulness. You can live your life all year. You don't need Thanksgiving. You can live your life all year with gratitude. May we seek to be, like Paul mentioned, having contentment in any situation to know that, number one, we focus on the positive. We try to focus on what we do have instead of what we don't have. Also, that we try to do what we can to reach out and to serve others. And by doing so, we can get the focus off of ourselves when we're feeling down. And then also to remember that God is always with us. We're never alone. And so as we do these things, may God bless us. And God has blessed us. So may we then be thankful to God and <coughs> seek to cultivate contentment in our lives. Because by doing so, we will find the secret to finding joy in our lives, no matter what's going on. Amen.